to welcome you, first of all. Thanks for joining Oakley Church. Uh, this is a little unorthodox in that. We've done some online things before, um, but this today is actually me doing this in Tennessee, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that, but also because I want to go to church in Tennessee with the rest of my family today um, as you are watching this. So I have recorded it, but I got some things I want to share with you. I believe this word is so relevant for where we are and for where we're going. But I want to first, I want to welcome you and I want to thank some people. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. I want to thank Through Christ Ministries, uh, Eli Contreras. I want to thank him and I want to thank him for his heart and for his dedication to serving people. But I want to thank Team Jesus Outreach Ministries and I want to thank Genuine Giving. Um, Octavio and Concha, uh, they are just such a blessing. Uh, Flory is such a blessing from Team Jesus Outreach Ministries. And the reason I'm sharing you with this, I, I have purpose here and I'm trying to kind of look at my notes as I go. So stay with me, all right? We're collaborating and planning different things with these people uh, that have been in the community and who are serving. It's given us an opportunity to serve people and it's given us an opportunity to reach further uh, than just Oakley and Oakley Church, uh, but be a source and a resource for people. So I'm excited about that. Um, I, you know, really, I also need to thank, um, it's, uh, I would say, so, so from Pittsburgh to Antioch to Oakley to Brentwood to Knightson to Bethel Island to uh, Discovery Bay, just this entire area, how people are coming together, especially through this crisis that we've been in and are coming out of, by the way, um, just to be able to serve people better. Uh, there should be no one that goes um, without food, without clothing around us. Um, we are just passionate about making sure that people not only, uh, as Jesus said, get clothed uh, and are fed, uh, but also that they understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. We want to get the message out there uh, because it's bigger than just food for a day. Uh, it's bigger than life itself as we know it. Um, I'll, I'll, and I want to thank them as well because we're planning a weekend that I can't wait to share more information about. But here's how it goes right now. Resurrection Sunday weekend, uh, we celebrate the uh, death and the overcoming of death in the resurrection of Jesus Christ that weekend. That Sunday, called Easter Sunday, is April 4th. That Saturday, April 3rd, um, we have some just some really good things planned. Uh, Eli Contreras, Through Christ Ministries, nine o'clock in the morning, from nine o'clock in the morning till one o'clock in the afternoon, on Saturday, April 3rd, we'll be giving away free clothes. Uh, tables will be out for people to come and get the clothes that they need. Please, let's keep it to those who are in need um, to be able to be clothed, shoes, you know, the things that come in are amazing. Uh, then we got a short break and starting right at two o'clock, um, Team Jesus Outreach Ministries and uh, Genuine Giving, Octavia, uh, uh, Concha, and, and other volunteers are already planned to be there. Um, they will start at two o'clock to set up uh, a free groceries and a free food day. That will start right at four o'clock. But what I'm excited about is not only that, there have been so many other people uh, that, that have pitched in for this same thing uh, that that will continue to not only be a food giveaway, but we're trying to, a goal of 500 toys for kids who can come and also be blessed on that day. Uh, starting at four, four o'clock. So it won't be just a, a clothes giveaway and a grocery giveaway throughout the day. It will be starting at nine clothes up to one o'clock. We'll shut that down. We'll get set up for the next thing, which will start at four o'clock, which is groceries and 500 toys uh, for kids who uh, have maybe not had the ability or maybe they even thrashed their toys during this whole time of COVID. I don't know, but we want to bless the community. And so there's some other people that are collecting things. Sandy Patterson, thank you for collecting things. Uh, there are so many other ministries pouring into that that are donating toys. Stewart Memorial Church in Pittsburgh donated some toys. Um, this, this is just, here's, here's what we need from you though. 
Um, we need two things from you. And we're not going to ask for money right now. We need two things. Number one, we need you to pray. We need you to pray that the people who are in need uh, get their needs met, uh, number one. And then pray that through those needs that are met, they have an understanding that their needs are deeper than just physical and natural things here on earth. Uh, that our needs as a human beings is this gift of eternal life. That we could get that message to them, the gospel message that Jesus Christ has died for their sins and was resurrected so and lives uh, so that we can have an ongoing living relationship with our Savior, the Messiah. So pray. That's number one. Number two, volunteer. Um, we have some teams that I believe will be there ready to give away. And I know that's the part where, you know, you, you want to see people get blessed. That's the exciting part. But we also need behind the scenes uh, help and volunteer help. And so what do we want to do? We're going to get the page set up. Our website is oakley.church. Many of you know, we're going to get a card set up so that you can just be a volunteer uh, card and it will be a, um, a heart to serve you know, card that you can uh, click on that and get plugged in and say, hey, I want to help serve. And we'll try and get right back to you and let you know how you can serve. So number one, uh, pray. And the second thing is number two is volunteer. Man, that's, I'm excited about that. So this is a great segue as well to our message today. Uh, the message is today, I called it uh, 18 to zero. And I'll explain that. It'll flesh out here in just a second. Uh, it's appropriate because the message is really about the heart of God's people today. I want to talk about the heart of God's people today. Uh, the 18 to 0. It's been said that uh, the distance between a person's heart and their mind is 18 inches. Uh, man, there is a way that we found in Scripture to get that 18 inches down to 0 to connect our hearts to our mind and have an understanding about what God really wants uh, for, our, for our lives. Now, I believe um, that this 18-inch thing can go either way. As it said, uh, some say that people miss heaven by 18 inches. It's the distance between your heart and your mind. That can go either way, and, and this is what I mean. Many have knowledge. Some, some have their doctrine in theology, uh, and they have everything here but it's never connected with a purpose. And so they've never done what the actual word of God says to do. They've never become who the actual word of God says that they should become. And then there's the other side of that. There are those who have a heart and they've passionately just, they've emotionally connected with God. And in a time of our need, God showed up. Or maybe um, they were uh, at a concert and God showed up. Maybe they were in worship and God showed up and it touched their hearts. And so they ran with that emotion, with that um, in their heart towards God. And they began to brag about God. But, but later on, they found that they never really connected the two. And so they maybe fell away. You know, you hear a story of that from Jesus. And we're not going to go there today, but he tells the story of the, of the seed and the sower. And a farmer went out and he sowed some seeds. And, you know, we see that story of the one that uh, springs up real quick, but then quickly dies because didn't have a time to get rooted. And so that is the one who would fall in love in an emotional sense with, with God and in the idea of God, but never connect the roots in the knowledge of who he is. And so that 18 inches, I believe, can be made up. And I believe in other areas of scripture, we're actually talking about that, but we'll see how. So let's get there. So let me read your one scripture and then we'll, uh, we'll dissect that. Uh, further and in different ways. Just go with me. Trust me. Uh, I know. Don't trust no man. Trust no man. Trust God. But go with me. How about that? For where, this is going to sound familiar to you. For where your heart is. Oh, sorry. I got it backwards already. This is going to sound familiar to you. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let me say that again. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Who said that? Jesus said that. And, and he says it in Matthew, uh, his account is in Matthew 6, 21. And then Luke, his account is in Luke 12, 
34. And Jesus said this because it was, and it still is, and I believe it always will be true. It's, it's an obvious statement by Jesus. It actually follows something. There's something that precedes this statement by Jesus. He's saying something that everyone knows is true. It's something that you know is true. It's a well-known fact that your heart tells your wallet what to do and not vice versa. It's a well-known fact. We know, everyone knows it's true, uh, that you look at your pie chart. Uh, man, I hate those things sometimes. Uh, but, but where was most of your money spent last year? Many of you are doing taxes around now. And um, you maybe have come up with a chart or you have seen in some way or another where your finances have gone, where your uh, treasures have gone. But we're going to talk about the treasure thing in just a moment. Uh, this, this idea uh, that we have uh, spent more money in one area in our life. Many of you know um, there are the necessities. Uh, there's the place to live. There's the food, the shelter. Uh, but beside those necessities, uh, I, you know, by this, I can tell you that, man, this past year, um, we like food more. And, or maybe that's a COVID thing and we haven't had the chance to, you know, we've bought a lot more food from places. We want to support local business really big about that as well. And so we don't mind sharing what the Lord has blessed us with in that sense. Um, so we can see that show up in the, in the pie chart, pie chart, food, get it. And it, that tells us that we are, we like to do this a little bit more. Now that chart, let me just tell you, does not compare to another chart. You know, throughout your lifetime, uh, we as people, if we were addicted to drugs, we can look at a pie chart during that time and tell you that we spent the most of our resources on drugs, on our addiction. We liked to party and we can tell you that in that time, we spent a lot of our uh, uh, treasures on alcohol. Things like that, you, you understand what I'm talking about. I can tell you that in this past year, uh, we have spent, I can tell you where our heart is. Let me, let me I don't wanna get too far off uh, track here. Uh, raising children, we, we could see where our heart is, get the giving and the resources and where our time and effort goes by where our treasure is spent. We poured our earnings into making a better life for our children, right? And so the, your, as your children are certain ages, your pie chart varies, by the way, to kind of catch up. I mean, it would go from credit cards reflect this or checking account reflects this to nowadays your Venmo would reflect this, how much you want to take care of your children and where your heart is. I am currently in Spring Hill, Tennessee. And I can tell you that my pie chart in the past year says that where my heart is, my treasure is. And if you look at the pie chart of where my heart is, my heart is with uh, connecting and stay connecting with my family. And so my pie chart is huge in that area. And we want to make sure that that continues uh, to happen. And so we're here. And like I mentioned, when I opened, we are going to uh, head off to church uh, with them. So um, if you want proof of where your heart is, look at where your treasure has been spent. The thing I love most about you, Oakley Church, is that the community can look at you and look at your pie chart and tell you where your heart is. The world can tell where your heart is because your resources, your time, your talent, and your treasure is spent on serving the community and serving God. And so, man, I'm so, I'm just so thrilled to be, um, you know, it just even a part of what's going on, what God is doing right now in Oakley Church. It's way bigger than us. It's way bigger than me. It's way bigger than you. 
It's way bigger than us. God has some some pretty cool things planned. And starting with this coming uh, Easter time, this coming weekend of resurrection in April. Uh, and by the way, following that, if you followed Oakley Church, f- the following week from then will be our second year anniversary as Oakley Church. And so we're going to celebrate that to follow up resurrection weekend. Now, um, selflessness is a big part of servantry, but I want to jump back into this word and let's get to, let's, let's, let's just be obvious where we spend our time, um, as a church is in prayer. It's in worship. It's in study of the word and it's with people. And so listen, Jesus said for where your treasure is there, your heart is also. I want to jump to what that means by talking about the treasure part. We're going to find, by going to something that Paul said, we're going to find maybe some more connections to what Jesus was actually talking about. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Would you turn there if you have your Bibles? 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And I'm going to start in verse 1. And it says, therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Verse 2, rather we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. Verse 3, and even our gospel is veiled. It is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not of ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. Now get this in verse six. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of knowledge. If you're there right now, I just want you to say knowledge. Maybe just whisper to yourself, but get it in your heart, knowledge. Let me read that again. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 4. That's verses 1 through 6. And I want to touch on something. Here's number one. All of your heart. Number one is all of your heart. Make the desire of your heart to learn more about the desires of your heart. Make the desire of your heart to learn more about the desires of your heart. Paul tells the Corinthians here. First of all, it begins with this, which I think is amazing. We do not lose heart. That happens many times throughout scripture. But right here, Paul says, listen, we do, if there's anything that happens, we do not lose heart. And you know why? Because of the knowledge that we have of the light in the darkness. Man, we're going to jump right to some here with some substance here because the reality is it is a matter of going 18 to zero. It's a matter of connecting what is in your heart, what God has put in your heart to your brain. Christians, man, we got to start using our brain more often and connect with the knowledge of God because it's that. That is the treasure. You see, the treasure is not the money in your pocket. Your treasure is not the things that you do for your own self-worth. Your treasure is the knowledge of God. It's the knowledge of God. Uh, Many times people lose heart, you know. uh, Paul says, we do not lose heart. Many times people lose heart because they lack the knowledge of God. Now, listen, I don't know the whole Bible. Uh, I'm your pastor. I don't know every word in the Bible. Um, But what I do know is that I need to continue to seek more knowledge. And you'll find that those times that I've slipped or times that you've slipped, that we've slipped, 
It's those times that we lacked the knowledge. It wasn't the times that we, we didn't lack the heart. We knew God was there. As a matter of fact, we would cry out for prayer and just say, God, help us. Or we'd cry out to friends and just say, hey, will you pray for me? And, you know, we have some friends who maybe got frustrated with us because they were trying to lead us in the right direction to say, listen, read the word. Read what God is telling you about this so you have confidence in who you are and don't just go off of, emotion. Many are losing heart today because they don't have an answer for what the world is trying to push on them. Many lose heart today because they don't have an answer for what the school or the world is trying to push on their children. Uh, the, you know, many today are trying to teach their children that they are, uh, they are equally created by the creator God while the world is trying to tell them they're not equal anymore. They're second class citizens. Or you know, there are so many teachings that are going on right now that are confusing uh, those who are not based and grounded in the knowledge of Christ. So knowledge, man, keep that knowledge. Say it again to yourself. We don't lose heart because we continue to know the truth. Listen to that, that part of the scripture in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. For God who said... Let light shine out of darkness. Made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Man, I could stop right there, but I'm going to go on. Verses 8 and 9 goes on to say this. This is the part, right? But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Now, many of you remember the song um, that, that goes with that. Number one, listen, number one, all your heart. Number two, all your mind. The treasure is the connection of all your heart to all your mind. You ever wonder why when we've been approached on every side, as scripture says, by troubles of this world, we feel that it, we were moments or inches away from being destroyed. And when your heart, see, when your heart is tied to the knowledge of this world, you will be destroyed uh, by the prince of this dark world. When our knowledge is tied to the one who created us, then we have this unbreakable uh, connection, undefeatable connection uh, with who God is. Jesus, when tempted and tested by the devil, if you remember, didn't go on his own and say, um, I'm going to take it upon myself in my emotional state of hunger and thirst, and I'm going to respond to the devil uh, with what I think I may uh, be able to do. Jesus didn't do that. He directly knew exactly what to do. He used his father's words. He spoke the words of his father, and he did so with authority because he had the authority to do so. I want to tell you, Christian, that the word of God, the knowledge that connects you, uh, that you have the authority to use that in his, in his name. Jesus said, and, and this is Jesus speaking in John uh, chapter 12, verse 44 through 50. It says, then Jesus cried out, whoever believes in me does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. The one who looks at me is seeing the one who sent me. I have come into the world as a light. Remember, uh, remember from even from last week, we spoke of the light. So that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. If anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge that person. For I didn't come to judge the world, the world, but to save the world. There's a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them at that last day. For I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. Jesus used the Father's words Listen, we have the authority to use the Father's words by way of 
the Son, Jesus Christ, through the way of the Holy Spirit of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We feel defeated by the enemy um, sometimes. It's usually when we've fallen away from the knowledge of God. We lose confidence. We lack a surety that we could respond to the devil's uh, schemes or even to this world. Um, you ever notice when you're staying in his word and you're studying and you're praying, uh, you have an immediate, sometimes it just comes out, you have an immediate defense and it's the word of God that defends that defends you. You know, um, some may have just connected with God emotionally through a song, maybe in a worship service or something and, and have just, you know, connected in that way. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, man. I connect with God all the time. I love, I love to worship uh, in music as well as many other ways, but I love to worship in music. And But some would say, man, when they sang that song, I just connected with God so much. I can tell you that just about any worship leader I know who sings that song, they don't want you to be emotionally tied into what they sang. They want you to be emotionally and not and have knowledge to the words that connect you to the Father. That's why worship music has to be very careful. Worship music has to glorify God and not us. Songs are not to worship me. Songs are not to bring glory to me. Songs are to bring glory to God. They should lead you to his word and not lead to people's words or to your Words. That leads us to number three. So number one, all of your heart. Number two, all of your mind. And number three, all of your strength. The scripture of Mark says, as Jesus pointed out, and you shall love the Lord your God. You remember this, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And so I want to talk about number three, all your strength. And I promise I'll close with this. There's reasons that Paul uses the jars of clay uh, reference, thinking of times when there were jars of clay. That's what the jars were made of, uh, clay. Clay was a uh, cheap and common way to make a vessel that would hold oils, liquids, uh, many things. They also were so common and so easy uh, that to make that they would break also easy. And so uh, I want to talk about all of your strength. With all of your strength, with all of my strength, I cannot handle the weight of this world. With all of your strength, you cannot handle the weight of this world. Listen, I understand, and I've said this many times, those of you who've been um, around my teaching at all, you've... You've heard this a bunch too, but maybe there's someone that hasn't heard this and you need this today. I don't know. But 1 Corinthians 10, 13 talks about um, that God is faithful and he won't let us be, I want you to get this word, tempted beyond what we can bear. Um, but when we are tempted, uh, he provides a way out so that we can stand up under it. The, we get caught up in this idea that God won't give us more than we can handle. I just want to tell you that I don't, I don't believe that is true. Uh, many say that, but you've, you know deep down inside, and this does damage because you know deep down inside that you've had some things that you weren't able to handle. And you say, why does this make sense now? And it didn't make sense then. It's because the knowledge of God. See, that scripture is talking about temptation. You see, see, God will never give you a temptation. See, uh, the, c temptation is common to man. And the scripture says that common temptation, uh, God will always provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. That way out is through his son, Jesus Christ. That way out is having the knowledge to connect the idea that God has, he would never have you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. But listen, in this world, in situations, people say, well, God won't put me through what I can't handle. That's a rough interpretation of that scripture because God is going to put you through some things that you can't handle. You know why? Because you're made out of clay. You're a jar of clay. You're a vessel that is brittle and fragile at times. 
And when you drop a jar of clay, it breaks. Listen, Christian, on your own, in your own flesh, you're fragile, you will break. But I wanna encourage you in something. That's not what Paul's talking about right here. You see, your vessel can't handle it, but here's what can, because you see, all of your strength in the world cannot handle the pressures of this world. Listen, all the money, wait, I gotta read this because I wrote it down here. All the money in the treasury of mine and Diane's hearts put together is not enough to protect our grandchildren from this world. All the treasure in all the banks cannot save this church, your families, or our grandchildren. The treasure that we hold in these vessels can only be the one thing that connects the heart to the mind, 18 to zero. Second Corinthians 4, seven, for God who said, the let light, let light shine out of darkness made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. He goes on in verse eight to say, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. Second Peter says this, chapter one, verses two through four, grace and peace be yours in abundance. Listen, through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. Listen, through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of this world caused by evil desires. Jesus is the relationship that leads us to further faith and further knowledge about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God. Listen, let's gain knowledge stay in his word. And, and I'm gonna pray that the Father would teach us to be undefeated. Because you see, it's the knowledge that is the treasure that we hold. And once we connect that 18 to zero, we, we, we connect the heart to that knowledge of God, then we have an undefeatable. That's why he goes on to say, I am pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, crushed, uh, stepped down but not destroyed, struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse for his promise will endure. I know that's the song part, but listen, the, the, the strength that comes will be a vessel that will be undefeated, but pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed, undefeated. I'm gonna pray with you right now. Father, I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would connect our hearts to our minds today and that, Lord, we would be the, the no more the broken vessel, the fragile flesh that holds uh, just some words on a page or the fragile flesh that holds just the emotion of the heart. But I pray right now, God, that those would be combined, that we would seek knowledge and that we'd have a passion to pursue you. And it would be so obvious to the world because we would, they would see us serving you, not for ourselves, but for your glory. And so, Father, I pray right now for every person here and every person there, uh, Lord, that you would give them this, this unction to just begin reading more of your word, understanding more about who you are and who they are in you. In ourselves, God, we're broken vessels. But we pray right now that by the knowledge of God, it says again and again in your word, your knowledge of who you are in us, Lord, that we are undefeated in your presence, Lord. We pray right now that this would be effective ministry ongoing. We bless you today. Uh, it's Sunday. Uh, the weather has turned in so many places and things are getting better. Praise the Lord. Thanks for hanging out with this, us. We'll see you soon. Love you.